Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Flask app to Python Anywhere. So if you're not familiar with Python Anywhere, it's a really easy way to host Python web apps. So this could be Flask, Django, Pyramid, or really any other framework that you can use in Python to build web apps. And I've created a video like this four years ago, but it's a little out of date. So I'm creating this video today so you can have an updated way of doing this because things have changed just a little bit. So you can use Python anywhere for free. They have something called the beginner accounts and just waiting for the site to load. It's a little slow right now. And you can just create a beginner account and it's free. If you want more functionality, like hosting more apps or just having more CPU power or various things, you can pay the cheapest plan is $5 a month. But for our purposes, the free account will be sufficient. So this is what the dashboard looks like once you create a new account. Uh, you have these links up here, consoles, files, web, tasks, and database. We'll be working with the first uh, four, and I'm sure you can imagine what databases mean, and tasks are just things that you wanna run uh, at regular intervals, and it's pretty easy to figure out how to use once you go there. So the first thing I need to worry about is getting my code from my local machine, which is running this app here. So the app isn't really that important but I wanna get the code for this app onto Python anywhere so I can actually you know, have my own address for it. So what I'll do is I'll stop the app and I'll create a Git repository. So git init, and what I'll do is I'll put my virtual environment directory in a git ignore, so I'll create that. So dot git ignore, and inside I'll just put env slash to ignore the env directory and it should turn white in just a moment to signify that it's no longer included with the rest of the files and we see that it's white. And then what I need to do is I need to uh, start up my virtual environment again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a requirements.txt file because I need to replicate this virtual environment on Python anywhere. So what I can do is pip freeze and then uh, requirements.txt and we should see the libraries that I have, okay? So now I can do uh, git add all, so git add period, git commit dash m first commit. And what I wanna do is I want to create a repo on GitHub. So I have my GitHub account, I'll create a new one, a new repo. So I'll call this Flask uh, QA app, make it private and the rest of the settings are optional. Hit create. And because I already have a repository, I wanna use these down here. So these two commands, so I'll copy the first and I'll paste it in. So I'm adding the origin, which means I'm connecting my repo on my machine to the actual remote repo on GitHub and I can push it. So git push dash u origin master and it's gonna prompt me for my username and password. So anthony at prettyprinted.com and then my password and it should push everything over to Python anywhere. And let's refresh. Okay, so I see my code here. So now I wanna bring this code over to Python anywhere. So to do that, I need to start up a console. So I'll go to the consoles link over here and I will create a new bash console. So I'll just click bash and I'll wait for it to load and it's ready now. So what I want to do is I want to clone the directory or the clone the repo that I have. So git clone is what I want. So git's already installed when you use Python anywhere. I'll click on this clone or download link and I'll just copy the a link and paste it in. And it's going to prompt me for the same username and password again. So I'll just enter those. And now I should have the directory on Python anywhere. So flask underscore QA underscore app. So that's exactly what I have. Now I want to create a virtual environment to run this app. So using Python anywhere, you can use uh, MK virtual env, which is a more convenient way of working with multiple virtual environments. We only need one, but it's still pretty useful for creating one. So to create a single virtual environment, I'm going to use the command MK virtual env. Then I need to give it a name. So env will be the name. And then I need to specify a Python version. So dash dash Python equals quotes uh, slash user. So USR slash bin slash Python 3.8, which is the latest version of Python at the recording of this video. 
and it's going to go ahead and create a virtual environment for me. And now it's done. So now that I have the virtual environment created, I want to uh, create or install all the libraries that I have in my project. So I'll CD into the directory. So Flask QA app. If I hit LS or type LS, I see requirements.txt. So I'll use pip install dash R. And this will install all of the requirements inside of the requirements.txt. Okay, so now that everything is installed, I can leave the console and where I want to go next is the web. So I'll just click on this menu over here and go to web. And then I want to click add a new app and just click next. And instead of clicking flask, I'm going to use manual configuration and I'm going to select Python 3.8 because that's the version of the uh, virtual environment that I'm using. And then just click next and it should create the app for you. Okay, so once that's done, you should be able to click on this link and see something. And we see hello world. So if you can see this, you know the app was set up correctly. So I'll leave that open because I'll just refresh it when I have my stuff in there. And now I need to manage some of the settings. So under virtual ENV, you can just type in the name of your virtual environment. You don't have to select the entire path or type the entire path because it will figure it out for you. So mine is ENV. And then source code, I enter a path to your source code. So same thing, uh, Flask QA app. And then what we wanna do is we wanna click on this WSGI configuration file. And this section here, starting from line 19, down to 47, this generates this particular page. So this is just an example to make sure everything's working. So you can delete this. And then you need to go down to the Flask section and just uncomment everything with one hash. So one hash there, one there, uh, one there, one there, and one there, right? So there should be what, five things you have to uncomment and not including the spaces. So for path, you need to specify the path of your Flask app directory. So in my particular case, it's Flask underscore QA app. And here on line 80, we need to import the either the main Flask app file or from the main Flask app file or just from the project. So in my particular case, I'm importing from the project. So if we go back, uh, this is what the project looks like. So this is Flask QA app, and then Flask QA is the name of the app, so Flask QA. So I'm going to import from Flask underscore QA. And instead of importing app directly, I can't do that in my particular case because I'm using the application factory pattern. So I have this create app. So what I need to do is I need to import create app instead of app. Now, if you're not using the create app, the app factory pattern, then you can import the app directly, but I have to import create app. And then on the next line, what I can do is I can say application. So they want it to be application instead of app. So application equals create app and it's a function. So I have to have the parentheses and I can save this. And then I can go back to the web tab. I'm going to open this one up because I know I have to come back here for something. So I'll open it up in a new tab and you can click uh, reload pretty printed.pythonewer.com or whatever your username is. You can reload it there or you can reload it up here. Either method reloads your app. So I'm going to wait for this to reload and then I'll refresh the page. And we get an internal server error. So a way that we can check the errors in our app is to go down to our log files and I'll click um, the error one, so the one in the middle. And then I can look at the error and I can determine how to fix it. So I know the reason why this error is happening. So I'm using python.env or yeah, python.env, that's the name of it. So I have these uh, .env files and the .flask env files. So I need to load this into the environment and it doesn't happen automatically on Python anywhere. I have to do something. So here's the information on how to do that. And it's down here. So this import OS and then all this code that follows. So what I'll do is I'll put it in my code between the path part and the import from Flask. And what I'll do is I will say, 
uh, the path is going to be the same as the path that I have defined above. So that, and then the project folder um, is the variable that gets assigned and I'm looking for the .env file. And by calling load.env, it's going to load everything into the environment. So I'll hit save and I'll restart the server. And then I'll try refreshing. And we see the app is now working and I can go to the different pages of the app and see it. Like I said, the app itself isn't too important, but uh, we see that it works. And one last thing that you may want to do is you want to you may want to set the static directory, so slash static slash. And then in my particular project, it's going to be home, uh, pretty printed admin slash uh, flask underscore QA app slash flask QA slash static. So any static files that I have can be served from the file system instead of the app itself. And I can do things like force HTTPS. I can have password protection. Uh, whatever I want in these settings, I can change. But the most important part is the app itself is working. So just to recap, really the most important two things that you have to know is if you're using the application factory pattern, you need to import your create app function and then use that to create an object called application, not app. And if you're using python.env like I am, you have to add this extra code to make it work. I'll put this as a link in the description below so you can uh, take a look at it and copy this code if you need it for your particular app. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about deploying to Python anywhere, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.